Stone House is another well-known place for a dark history and, of course, hauntings. Located in Monticello, Arkansas, built in 1906, it's a beautiful home but is rife with apparent ghostly sightings and creepy and disturbing stories from those who lived or stayed there in years past and even today. The house centres around the Allen family, most especially the daughter, Liddell. It was Christmas 1948 when it is said that Liddell consumed cyanide, tragically dying eight days later. The room where Liddell died was sealed off by her mother and was not opened again for nearly four decades. When it was eventually opened by the then owners, there was apparently the poison bottle found on a closet shelf. The current owners also found around 90 letters pertaining to a secret relationship that led Liddell to consume the poison along with a bottle of rum. These letters were found in the attic. Stories of paranormal activity began with many people claiming to see a woman in the window of what was Liddell's closed off bedroom. It is alleged that it is the most haunted house in America. There are supposedly about six spirits that occupy the home. The main spirit haunting the Allen house is the second daughter, Liddell, who committed suicide by drinking poison, as in cyanide, on Christmas night in 1948, after her secret love affair apparently went sour. That secret wasn't revealed until the current owners discovered love letters in the attic. The owner said, The first batch of letters that I discovered were from October 1948. I opened one of the white envelopes, took the letter out, and saw that the greeting was, Dearest, and it was signed with just the initial P. It was then I realized that I was looking at a love letter written to Liddell two months prior to her tragic suicide. It was in the attic where I had my first encounter with Liddell. At one point in the day, as I was reading the letters, I looked up at the ceiling of the attic and I said, Liddell, I am so sorry. It was shortly after that that I looked up again and I saw a woman walking toward me. She looked like a woman from the 1920s era. At least that was my impression. I wiped the sweat out of my eyes, blinked a few times, and when I looked again, the woman was further back in the attic. And it was my wife coming up the stairs. It was all very strange, and I couldn't make any sense out of what was happening. The ghostly woman was approaching me, and then suddenly my wife was entering the room, and the ghostly figure backed away and disappeared. Another encounter I had with Liddell was in the bedroom where she had consumed cyanide. At first, I thought it was my wife ghostly figure was standing in front of the bedroom window and seemed to be intently peering out but the odd thing was the drapes were closed so she must have been looking right through the closed curtains I walked towards her not taking my eyes off her when I get about three feet away ready to speak to her although I had no idea what I was going to say she just then vanished completely right before my eyes. I stood there, unable to think, speak, 
or moved for a minute or two. Then I walked out and closed the bedroom door in a trance-like state. Then there's the mystery of the ghost children. Many people who have either lived or just visited Allen House have reported seeing ghost children, small ghostly entities. Paranormal investigators have actually recorded electronic voice phenomena of children's voices. Even some guests staying in the house have recorded the voices of these lost ghostly children throughout the house. On a postcard of the house from 1908, one can clearly make out the ghostly image of a young boy on the left side of the front steps. In 2010, the wife of the current owner met face to face with a ghost child. She said, as soon as my eyes locked onto it, I just could not look away. I was transfixed for around 10 seconds or so, just looking at the little girl. Looking at her wasn't scary. What was scary and very disturbing was that I couldn't control my reactions on seeing her. As soon as I saw her, I could not breathe. It was like my internal organs all wrenched up together and I couldn't do anything except stand there, frozen, unable to move. Once I was able to blink and look away, the apparition of the ghostly little girl just vanished. Then there was the Victrola incident. The Victrola used to be downstairs in the parlour room. There was an event booked the following day in that very room. The current owner said, I was in there just tidying up the room. I turned on the vacuum and as I was going past the Victrola, my eye caught movement coming from it. I noticed that the record inside it was spinning. I just kept carrying on with my cleaning, but I was also thinking how weird that was. Maybe the kids had been messing around with it, I told myself. I just didn't really know what to make of it. But as I was preoccupied with getting the room ready, I continued on and took no more notice. It became very unnerving. So I turned off the vacuum and went to look at it and the record started spinning faster. The longer I looked at it, the faster it went. Eventually it was spinning fast enough to play the record with the music and the song coming out. So I decided to put the needle down on the record and as soon as it touched the record, it stopped instantly a sudden halt and there was just deadly silence apparently Liddell's mother would play the Victrola quite often for guests and as I was expecting guests the next day I can only tell myself that Liddell's mother was helping out by playing some music ready for my guests there are many more haunting stories from Allen House. There are guided tours for anyone game enough to explore and possibly experience their own sightings. Would you? <laughs>